What's up, fellas? This is the uh, bit of a kit we've got going on here today. We're going to be testing out this machine today. This is the 3000 watt version, I believe. I have a cyclone separator that I'm going to be using to get rid of some of the larger chunks of the EDM waste. And one of the things that I wanted to try is concept of boring Allen wrench holes into broken off taps and broken off bolt heads because I've come across that problem before. There are some twitch that you can use to get them out with a welder, but um, that might not always work. The welder technique does work though. But we're gonna try this because there are some applications where if the bolt is too small, you can't use the welding app, the welding technique. I've already drilled some holes in this tap with this machine right here. It did very well. This thing saved my life, basically. I had a, um, a job with six broken drill bits. And that's what's fine right now. So one of the first videos I did on this smaller machine, the company liked it enough that they were going to send me this 3000 watt version for free to test out. Um, so I thought I'd bring you guys along for that. This is the only way I was gonna get them out without damaging the quality of that piece of equipment. Now, until just a few years ago, these machines were not even available. An EDM process was something that was just out of reach for the average person. You pretty much had to build your own. And some companies who did tap and um, drill bit removal specialized in this, and they had built their own machine using off-the-shelf parts. So you can see some very unique Patterns can be drilled out based on the electrode shape. I had a hollow tube doing some of this. A carbon rod was used on that very large hole that you see there. The offset holes are just amazing that this thing can drill. An offset hole is the hardest of all. This is a piece of uh, hard steel that I decided to do an angle bore with a carbon rod. I'm not so fond of the carbon rods, I don't think. This machine doesn't work as good as it could with these. I think brass is maybe a little bit better, but the electrode wear is significantly smaller. When you're doing high power boring like this, the cuts aren't as clean. Now I cut this carbide tip in half, but it broke on its own when it got down to that last little bit there. You can kind of see the crystal where it busted. I had the power up on max, and I believe maybe that had something to do with it. You can see the amount of electrode wear that we're looking with here just to cut that little bit of carbide. I may have had the power turned up. This right here is a half inch NPT tap that we bored through in about 14 minutes. This here is a seven millimeter hex, I believe, or actually it's a nine millimeter hex bolt that we bored to simulate a busted off bolt. And this is a different uh, array of holes that I tried to bore. Pretty nice little holes there. You can build multiple prong bits and drill like 10 holes at a time. So basically because the hole's not on the center line of this rod, doing that with the conventional drill, the drill bit's obviously just going to buck off to the side there. You've got to grind a flat spot to pull it off. But this machine does it with ease. It, it doesn't even really touch the material half the time. And if you don't use the vibration mode, you get really clean cuts. All right, so this next test, here's kind of the 30,000 foot view cut back on some of the splatter, I'm going to try this little technique. And we are going to simulate a broken bolt with an Allen wrench removal possibility here. Now, typically you can just weld a nut onto a bolt that's this big, but sometimes it's so down far in the hole that that might not be an option always. Okay, so we got all of our flows going. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and use a stepper on this. And here we go. Everything's in order. The head is going down. We'll go ahead and turn it to full power. Looks like I'm off center just a bit. Oh, the vibrate's not on. See that? Sometimes too much power ain't always the best. 
we're now running pretty steady. And I feel like it bores quicker like this, even though it seems like it's less power dissipation. This adjusts the gap that you're running at. It fine tunes the gap that the electrode's going to go at, they say. We're making a subtle adjustment to the cyclone. I turned it down just a little bit, and all of a sudden it really started to separate some material. I also opened the gate just a tad. This is called a hydro cyclone. This bottom part is just a flow gauge I added on there to observe the performance. I'm just amazed at how a simple adjustment to the input velocity of the cyclone And opening that wastegate just that little bit is causing some monumental separation. I ordered a whole set of these hex rods of different sizes. Check that out, fellas. We got ourselves a beautiful hex hole and our broken off bolt. Okay, so here's just a couple of other clips, the performance of this machine running at different power levels. And more power is not always better when it comes to process rate. If you put too much power into this small electrode, it can weld to the work. We're at 270 watts. See they're running at about 230 watts. This is the cyclone setup. You see the pump that are sitting next to another reservoir. I've got like three pumps going here. And I have a towel filter also. And my fresh water for the drill bits coming from that little pump right there sitting in the clean water. And then I have the cyclone system kind of cleaning up that dirty pool. So this is the little hydro cyclone, this little black piece. This other part I added. And we have a clarifier tube there. And you can see this thing is performing phenomenal. I see a lot of guys using filter systems on their EDM tanks. And I've never seen anyone run a hydro cyclone on there but they do complain about their filters clogging up significantly. And this is what you would want to run your fluid through first before filtering. You probably should still filter it, but man, does this knock a bunch of that material down. And then I have this pump here, pump that material back into the tank after it's settled. This is the, the work tank, and you can see how much stuff is just floating in that water. And this is the sediment tank, the clarifier tank. Can't see any of that stuff. The cyclone brings it all to the bottom. The clarifier, that little stainless steel tube, that arrangement is a must. All right, we're gonna try and do an angular drill. Do a hard piece of steel with a carbon rod. All right, so it took about 20 minutes to do this 45 degree bore hole into this hardened piece of steel. When you first start out, you don't want to crank the amps up all the way until that electrode surface area has increased. More power isn't exactly better. The carbon rod puts off quite a bit of our material, it looks like, but we didn't really lose a lot of electrode. I think this may just be rust from the metal. I'm not seeing any black carbon rod, to be honest. And you can see all the material that came off that piece of steel. Without this cyclone, we'd just be a chummed up mess. This thing is definitely saving the day here. So, about 20 minutes in, we bored this angular hole through this 14 millimeter piece. I did not bother finishing through, boring it all the way through. The EDM millings are significant and they do have to be removed for the best performance. Nine millimeter hex. It's going to make a nine millimeter hole anyway. Sorry you can't see this. It's going to splatter, so if I don't have this cup on here, I'm going to have issues. That is a quarter inch NPT tap. Slowly adjusting this till I get some bacon going over there. There we go. Not really deep into the metal yet. This thing would be splattering like fire crackers right now. Okay, we're about 12 minutes in.
And we are just sharing it and burning. All right, it's been 15 minutes. We're going to stop the process by hitting this. The machine automatically retracts. And uh, we'll take a look at what happened here. I'm impressed. Dude, for 14 minutes or so, that's the feed rate we're getting, the process rate. Okay, so this is how much material the cyclone was able to remove. All of that would have been gumming up the filter system. Pretty big layer of muck. And the rest of it just kind of set here in the eddy current pools. So if you don't have a proper flow, the heavier stuff just kind of sits there. But, um, so there it is the hydrocyclone so there you go fellas they've turned the EDM machines into something as simple as a portable MIG welder it's about time too they're still a little pricey so if you want a discount you can contact this company through the links that I'm putting in the description they will give you a discount if you mention no box 7 um, this discounts gonna change of course based on time like if you see this video a year from now they're not going to be able to offer the same. It may be better or worse depending on where we are in the new world order, I guess.